for you, it's not the training advice that's going to help you. It's the psychology of it. For you, it's like 90% of the game is, is sticking in the game, you know, like not giving up and really working on this area of your life because your journey is going to be different than my journey, different than Radu's journey. Our journeys are different. Everybody's journey is different. So for you, it's going to come down to sort of like conditioning your mind and reconditioning your mind to stick with the program, to, to trust the system, to trust the process that you can add weight over time, get stronger and, and maximize your own potential. Like me and you are never going to look the same. Like I'm not going to look like him or him or he's going to look like me. Like we can't. That's just the way you have your, your muscle bellies, your insertions, your, your structure is very, very individual. So you're, you're sort of like your duty, the way I see it, is to make that the best you can. And it's again coming down to psychology and reminding yourself of the vision that you have for yourself, whether it's a gold card or whatever it is. Like really think about that. And this, this goes for everybody, guys, okay? So I wanna I want stress this point. If you're not conditioning your mind, someone else is conditioning your mind. Like if he doesn't take control over his mind and what he's conditioning his mind to do and the actions he's gonna take based on his identity, someone else is gonna condition him. Whether it's gonna be Facebook, click on my ad, whether it's gonna be McDonald's, hey, get, get this McFlurry, whatever dessert. Someone is going to condition some company, some some things, people around you, everybody is conditioning you if you're not conditioning yourself. So you got to take control over your own psychology and what comes in your mind and what your mind is focused on. Because you can achieve all these things that you want. But at the end of the day, it's you taking full control of it, taking responsibility and sort of like creating a barrier. Okay, I, I remind myself of this every single day through motivational videos, informational stuff, books, uh, surrounding yourself with people, being a part of mastermind groups, finding other tall guys so you can talk about the insecurities, how you, you have to bend down to talk to people, you know, like I never had the problem, but I heard it's an issue. Uh, so th th there's stuff like that, right, that, that only other people that are in the same situation can resonate with. So you, you got to seek out those people. So then you can be in a sort of a situation where you get that extra encouragement because we're all social creatures. I mean, social support is a huge issue when we're talking about success. And we can see this across the board in every research study on diets or weight loss. Social support plays a massive role because we literally are that average of the five people we hang out with. Like, th that's no questions asked. And if those average five people are telling you, oh, man, you're good enough, you know, like if those, average, if those five people are naysayers, you're gonna have a very, very hard time to figure out what your goals are and how to stick with them. And I don't wanna sound that, that those naysayers are doing you harm because sometimes they can be your friends, your family, your girlfriend, your sister, your brother, whoever. It's not, not that they wanna harm you, but it's like they wanna protect you from the unknown. When they're telling you, uh, when they're telling you like, hey, you shouldn't invest in this business, right? People will tell you that, for example, even those who are not very qualified to give you business advice, but simply because they want to protect you from that kind of stuff. You know, like, oh, your mom is going to tell, oh, don't go to the gym, like, you're going to break your back. <laughs> you know, she, she's like, she doesn't just, understand. so you have to have empathy for, for the advice and the environment that, where that advice is coming from, because it's coming from a good place, coming from a place of caring. So don't, let, don't interpret it as it's, that, that it's steering away from your journey. Right? Have your own journey and stick to that, right? It's a little bit of a side tangent here. Isn't it? <laughs> so, I think that uh, as, a, as a tall guy, you will naturally have more lean mass than shorter guys uh, in terms of quantity. So I think the only challenge is time. Being consistent with your training f for uh, uh, a long enough period of time for you to actually do, for you to, to develop the, the physiques. Some exercises may be more difficult to you than for others, for example, squats, maybe. Uh, but I think once you build a great physique, <laughs> taller guys are actually the most impressive yeah. because uh, not, not only they, they, they just look, look large and imposing. And I think <laughs> it's, it's, uh, uh, you have to work harder, but the reward is also bigger. Yeah, look like a, like a bouncer in a year or something. <laughs> it's like people are afraid of you. <laughs> like. So yeah, um, Radu, Mario, thank you so very much for having this seminar. You're both awesome YouTubers, right? Evidence-based in an age of what is realistically, let's say, not very <laughs> evidence-based. Yeah. Um,
Um, looking back a few years when you guys started, what would you tell your younger selves regarding fitness and the YouTubes? Because they're sort of intertwined. So what advice we would give to yeah. ourselves? Yeah. Mm, yeah, that's 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 a tough question, man. And uh, one, it kind of ties back to what I just said. It's really that over over the last few years, I've noticed that that one big thing that changed in my life, and this is probably gonna resonate with all of you guys, are some form of mastery on a journey. Is that you start trusting yourself more. In the beginning, I didn't trust myself at all. Like I would always doubt my own things, even the stuff that was working for me. I would doubt it because it wasn't the same as for someone else. And I would be following a program that was really giving me results, but then I would see someone shredded on, on Facebook or on YouTube, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take his program. You know, like even though I was getting results, I didn't trust my own self enough. And that's very, very important. That self trust over, I mean, you can only develop it literally through mistakes and, and through the journey. But that's one thing if I could, like, I mean, if I could say, right now I wouldn't change anything, just to point that out. But of course, that, that was a big deal that I, that I noticed over the course of the few years that I just started trusting myself more with the way I can express my content, the way I can deliver content, how many people I can help. And that's a, that's a huge, huge part of my life because, I, I mean, I was never the type of guy that someone would listen to, right? Like when I grew up, like I was like, like average or below average. So I was never listened to. I don't know if you guys ever felt like that. You felt like you're insignificant. Like when people talk, you're like a furniture there. <laughs> like your furniture, right? The only time you get attention is if you do something weird so people make fun of you. You know, and over the years and years of years as, as growing up, because I, I was uh, very short when I was growing up, so I just all of a sudden gained a little bit of height in high school. But before that, I was really, really short and like until my second or third grade. It was terrible. It was good for soccer because I was playing a lot of football back then. I was like, uh, football or soccer, however you guys call it. I was, I was kind of good at it, but I never had the trust. Because I was always like, okay, if I, if I like stand up, if I say something, like boom, you know, like, you, like shut up, right? Like, why are, you, why are you talking? They're like, why are you like raising your voice, you know, like, why do you have a chance to talk, right? So in, in that kind of reflected in my YouTube and my fitness journey in the beginning because I was like, shit, man, like nobody's going to listen to what I have to say. Even though my intentions were correct, I didn't have the belief and that reflected in my content. Like I didn't believe that, that I could help. And that's very, very important, guys. So don't let those uh, limiting beliefs that are being imposed on you take away your ability to make the world a better place because you all have that ability, right? Just don't let the, the, either the haters, the naysayers, or, or just people that are just flat out just wrong affect you because a lot of things, if you're coming from a good place of good intentions, those are good things, right? So and we, we owe it to the world to put those things out there, right? So I couldn't, I was like at the point, I had to choose either regret or satisfying what all these people were, were thinking and thinking of me and the self-image that they wanted me to have. And, I, and, and, and there was no regrets. The third option, I was like, fuck, no regrets. I'm just going to go all out. Hate it or love it, right? That's the point. I've, I've heard this, this, questions many, this question many times being asked to um, successful people in, in general. Um, I think that this comes up almost all the time when, when someone achieves uh, a big success. I, I'm, I'm not saying that we are big successes, yeah. but I, 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 I notice that people, <laughs> I, I notice that, that people wanna, want to see, want to learn what they would have done differently in the beginning. And I think this is, the reason people ask that question is because they want advice for, for themselves to follow in their footsteps. Uh, or, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the thing is, I, I personally think that all the experience that I had until now were necessary to make me who I am. And if I, if I could go back and change something, I wouldn't. Because I like where I'm right now. I think the lessons that I, that I the experience that I have right now were, were part of the choice, were as a result of the, of the choices I made. And uh, I think that it's, it's important to, to, to view it from this perspective. At every point in your life, you have a challenge that you need to overcome. And if, you, if someone came 
to you and told you how to overcome the challenge, you wouldn't grow from it. You wouldn't go through the difficulty alone for you to, to develop uh, what was necessary. And uh, are you familiar with the, um, with, uh, the, 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 the story of the butterfly, I think it, it's called? Uh, you, know, you know that a, a butterfly is, is first a, a caterpillar. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it makes that, that cocoon and uh, it grows inside. And when it has to, to get released from that cocoon, it fights and it fights. It fights for hours, sometimes maybe days, to get out of the, the, the cocoon. Don't quote me on the time because I don't know. <laughs> the idea is that it, it fights. If you come with a knife and you open the cocoon, the, the butterfly will fly very easily out of the, 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 the cocoon and you would think that you, would have, that you helped it. But actually, it's going to die in a few hours. Why? Because it's not strong enough. It didn't have the challenge to build itself up and then face the, the, the real world. So I think, at least in my case, I, I wouldn't give myself any advice. I would just say, do what you feel is right. Trust, trust yourself and act. Act. That, that's it. I, I, I personally never had a problem with that. It's one of those unconscious competent <laughs> things that, uh, that that I have, I'm, I'm, I, it always it, it always came easy for me to act, but I know that for, for some people it doesn't. And I think overcoming that challenge of being afraid to act is the most important thing in, in the beginning. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we take more questions. Um, yeah. So for both of you, um, what were your biggest mentors or most important mentors while you were growing up? Growing up like on this uh, career path. And uh, the second question is, what are your end goals? How do you see yourselves at the end of the game? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start. Uh, for me, it all, it all started when I was in my last year of high school. I. Uh, I came across the idea, so in, to, to tell you the, 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 the complete transformation uh, story is uh, when, I, when I was in high school, I had the problem with, uh, with being social. <laughs> I, was, I was very socially awkward. I, I didn't know how to, how to talk to people and be interesting. Uh, Sometimes I remember th this is one of the most painful memories I have. One guy that I, that I considered cool in high school wanted to fist bump me. And I thought that he wanted to high five me. So what ended up happening was, <laughs> and I was, <laughs> and uh, I, it, it was bad, it was bad. And of course I, I could not, I could not talk to girls. I, it, 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 it wasn't, it, it, wasn't a, uh, it wasn't a happy place. So what I did is I, I got into books. One night it hurt so bad in a club because I, I wanted to talk to, talk to a girl. Uh, and I, I, I would just stay there, sharking, you know, you know the term sharking? <laughs> and I would look, and other guys would come, dance with her, but I, I would just stay, stay there with the beer, and I said, no, no, I'm, 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 I'm one of those cool guys. <laughs> and of course, it did, not, nothing happened. So I went home that night, and I immediately went online and looked for, uh, for personal development books on, 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 that, on that part. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, <coughs> I started developing my, 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 social my, my social nature. And what I found was one of the, the most important lessons in my life is that you can learn and get better results in life. Because after about six months or eight months of applying what those books um, taught me, I, I became a much, a much more confident person. I, I would be um, uh, more outgoing and uh, more talkative. And it, it changed me. So I learned that information can change you. And after I got that taste, that first, state of, that, that first taste of personal development, I wanted more. And uh, when I was in high school, I, uh, I thought that I, I wanted to earn some money. <laughs> and uh, I, I learned about uh, a, a network marketing company. And uh, I, I, joined, I joined that company. It was basically a sales company. And I, I got mentored by... Uh, the best, the best distributors in that company fr from Romania. Uh, it was, it was 
luck because they were the parents of a, of a, of a classmate of mine. So I spent about a year learning from, from these incredible people. So basically they, they were millionaires. They were, they, they had a network of people of several hundred thousands of people. They were, they were incredibly good with people. They were incredibly good salesmen and they had a very positive mental attitude, a very, a very, um, uh, a, a, a very humble approach to success. And I, I picked up those those traits from from them, and th that, that that was the start for me. Because after one year with them, I I basically uh, accepted their life philosophy as the correct one. I I, I uh, pushed aside the the beliefs that I had when I was a kid that I that you can't really do much in life. That uh, uh, you have to you have to be lucky. You have to uh, know people to to do to do things in life. I learned from them that you can go from nothing to incredible success. And uh, that was that was the point that I think uh, uh, changed me. Th that was the experience that changed me the most. And after that, other big mentors uh, besides them, uh, I, I I didn't met I didn't meet other mentors that I had. It, they were just people that I learned from. For example, I, I studied all the work of Jim Rohn. It, 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 it's, it, he's, my, he's my favorite uh, public speaker. Then Bob Proctor, uh, Greg O'Gallagher from Kinobody was a big mentor of, me, uh, of mine in the beginning. And uh, I think all the people that I, that I learned from, I consider them mentors in a way, even, even guys uh, uh, from fitness, guys like Eric Helms or Alan Aragorn or Brad Schoenfeld, I consider them some sort of mentors, even if I did not meet them. But if you were asking about in-person mentors, I think uh, those those uh, those managers in that company were were the ones that uh, affected me the most because they gave me the first glimpse and what you can achieve in life. That's uh, that's amazing. Yeah, it's very very similar to him because like I mean Romania and Croatia are very similar countries, right? So we grew up in an environment where. And you're not going to have Gary Vee to be your next door neighbor, you know, like you're not going to have Anthony Robbins across the street, like, hey, Anthony, like, give me some motivation, you know, <laughs> like you're not going to have these uh, extremely very successful role models as much as how much negativity and how much environment might not even be negativity, but it's more like just, you know, it's like just let loose, you know, like let life happen. It's just going to happen as it's supposed to be. You're not... You don't need to take control over it. You know, if you don't have the genetics, you are the math person, you're not the math person. It's sort of like the fixed mindset. If you guys know what fixed versus growth mindset is, fixed mindset is sort of belief that it, it's the talent. It's like the innate ability that makes you who you are and that by any kind of work that you do is irrelevant if you don't have the talent versus the growth mindset, which is like, okay, whatever am I in right now, I can make some positive changes. I can make it better. I can adopt. I can learn from my mistakes. I can grow. And... <laughs> Um, back like, uh, like eight years ago, even before I ever thought about fitness or anything, like because my fitness journey is, is a parallel journey to my personal development journey. Most people don't know that because when I put out my transformation story on my website, I mean, I did focus on the fitness side of things because the website is about fitness, but there's a parallel journey of personal development. There's a parallel journey of working on my social skills. There's a parallel journey of working on my spirituality and making me grow as a person who I am, right? So all these journeys happen at the same time. But the one that actually triggered everything was the personal development journey. Because if you don't think you can actually change or make yourself better, like nothing will work. You know, like none of these other actions will help because you think you're stuck. What I, what do you currently have? You think you're stuck with this job because you're supposed to do it. You think you, 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 you're just not the sporty type. You know, I thought like, I was like, oh man, like my, my, my genetics and my, I'm going to have this belly for the rest of my life. And that, if I was looking for proof in my environment for that, I would just find it because everybody around me was looking the same. You know, as I saw, like, look, this is what a 30 year old is supposed to look like. This is what a 40 year old looks like. This is what a 50 year old looks like. 60 year old, 70 year old, you get cancer and you die, right? And I was thinking like, well, okay, you know, like, <laughs> you know, that's, that, that, that's like the life, you know, and, and, but after a while, I actually met up with my buddy uh, from Australia. He's the guy that actually triggered everything, literally. And he gave me a book called Awaken the Giant Within. Huh. He also gave me the second book called The Game. You guys know The Game? Yeah. Neil Strauss, right? So he gave me two books, right? And the first book that I read was actually The Awaken the Giant Within. Because it's the book that, I don't know, at that moment, I, I read that book in two days. 
right? And I, I didn't read any books before that. I thought books were for nerdy guys. I thought books were, books were shit. Like, I was like, man, like, who reads, you know? Like, I didn't want to read. I finished college, you know, I had, I had a master's degree in computing, and I was like, had this steady job, you know, like all this terrible stuff that I didn't want to really do because everybody was pushing me in that direction. My family and, it, like, it was so much pressure on me. I'm the first person in my family to actually graduate college or even go to college. You know, like, all this fucking pressure on me to perform. And I had this job, and I was, like, reading this book, and it's telling me, look, you can do stuff that you, you currently can, but you can work up to it. You can get better if you take action. You know, like, if you, you muster yourself, you create a clear plan, if you take action, you get better over time. I was like, oh, my God, you know, like, th this guy is onto something. It kind of came at the right time in my life because if that book came one year earlier, I wouldn't take any action. You know, I think, like, this is a pussy, you know, this doesn't work. <laughs> if it came one year later, it might have been too late. I might have already been in that rat race for long enough for me to be completely out of the game, right? But then I got that book and then I read the game as well. And like one day, oh my God, you can actually talk to people in the street. You can actually talk to someone and, and like, and it's all about the system. You know, what, what the book really, the game is like, it's about the system. It's not like that you don't know, like you're not supposed to be born with it, but it's teaching you that social skills are something you learn. I was like, oh my God, I never thought about it. Because I always thought like people outgoing, people are naturally outgoing. They, some of them are. Yeah, and some of them are. Like there are, there are like, as, as I said earlier in the bell curve, you know, there's that outlier there, same as that guy do 50 push-ups at home, have a big chest. There's that guy and that girl who is naturally outgoing and they just don't need anything because they're, maybe their family's outgoing, their, their entire thing is super, super, super extroverted. For me, a guy who's playing World of Warcraft, like in a dungeon, <laughs> which is my basement living with my parents and like not interacting with more than three different people in like a month. <laughs> I'm not that extroverted outlier. So when I read the game, I was like, oh my God, you know, like you can actually find a logical pattern to this and figure it out. It was like a real, like holy text, you know, and I just read it and I started practicing it a little bit. Then I go deeper into the forums because I, I used to do forums back when I was playing World of Warcraft. I would like research forums all the time. That was like the best place. And entirely you could like joke around people chat with them you know it's like oh are you an orc i'm a paladin yay you know like you get like these you get these real relationships with people because you have this one thing in common and it's like just bonds you very fast because like oh you're gonna do this raid i want to go with you and it's like yay you know it's like super easy to meet up with people and then i read this book and i was like okay let me search for other forums maybe there's forums on social skills and i found like this weird random forum as i something like, like PUA something I don't know like some kind of where everybody's names were like Captain Destructo Vagina or something crazy like that was like <laughs> <laughs> like you would like see the weirdest names you know like 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 the creeper from next door you know like, <laughs> like people would get like put these nicks uh, in there you know or there, some of them would use their old like like uh, social warrior or some shit like that, you know, that was like the, the, the terms, right? So I was like, okay, okay, this is weird, <laughs> but let me see, you know, like me, I, I, I got enough belief to, to just see what it's about. You know, sometimes you just need a little bit just to check it out so you don't discard it immediately. And I started like digging a little bit. I was like, holy shit, it's all like a bunch of weird fuckers here. And I like, these guys like talk about some, they use like code words, like lay reports, something like that talking about but then there was this uh sub forum it's called like natural game or something right and i went in there and i found out about uh rsd right resource dynamics and i downloaded this program called Bl blueprint decoded right which which talks a little bit about social skills but it was mainly about identity shift like it's mainly about identity shift right and that combined with uh, reading, uh, I think it's called Brian Tracy's book called No Excuses, at the same time in parallel, I was sort of like getting a glimpse that I can make these changes in my life, that I can build a new identity of a person that, that gets all these things, that I can do that. So I didn't want to tie, I didn't want to tie my self-image to who I am right now. I can just destroy that self-image and I can build a new one and act through that. So I shouldn't act on my emotions or, or I shouldn't take any action based on what people think of me. I shouldn't take action on, on, on my environment. I should just take action on who I believe I'm supposed to be. And that's very powerful, right? And sort of like I just started discovering more of like 
or is these stuff like there was like some YouTube videos back in the day it was just starting out I got more and more deeper into personal development I read a book by uh, Tim Ferriss the four hour work week you know that kind of opened up my mind to the business side of things I was like oh my god you can actually like get out of the rat race like holy shit and I don't think that book is the best book in the world but it has the proper idea in your mind it's a little bit of extreme right because when you're so extreme in the rat race side of things you need an extreme from the other example to pull you to the center because when you say like oh you can work only four hours a week oh my god you know i'm like doing 40 and i and it sucks and i can right. do four and it and it's amazing it, it, it was the same thing for me because yeah, it's I, like... I learned about passive income and that's what attracted me to that to that company in the first place exactly yeah, it's, it's the idea of not working and earning money was whoa okay like you can actually do this into that. and it's it's I, I don't think there's there's such a thing as really passive income but you can earn substantially more than than, than you work yeah okay, sorry, if you really ahead. apply yourself right yeah. if you really really apply yourself so it's about find, finding those balance points and some some of the stuff that i read from like the, the the game and the pa world was really powerful because it was the opposite of the, what i was doing like complete opposite it wasn't balanced where I am right now, but it was just the extreme that I needed to get back to the center. And when I started re learning the four hour work week, I get into a book called The Millionaire Fast Lane. I don't know if you guys read that book. It's really, really powerful. It talks about how to become an entrepreneur. Got uh, books like uh, from Michael Gerber, I think it's called E Myth. Yeah, that's, that's it's great. a really, really awesome book. And you start learning, d damn, man, like I can delegate, you know, I don't have to do everything by myself. I can make the money work for me, like Robert Kiyosaki stuff. Yeah like the classic stuff and I was getting more and more into it I, I learned like Zig Ziglar uh, like Napoleon Hill I was I was reading this long ass book by Napoleon Hill I was like oh my god man it's like never ends but it's like, like the laws of success yeah it's like it, it's two months you know in just one book and and I was reading it but it's it's brainwashing me in the right way right it's brainwashing me but positively because remember what I said earlier it's either you brainwash yourself or someone is brainwashing you in another direction up until that point, my environment was brainwashing me to be this, just this, this average, it's sort of like this epidemic of averageness. Like you can just be this average person, you know, just average out to everything about you. But when I was reading this stuff, it was empowering me that I can be more. And it's very, very uh, contagious. Very, very contagious, as you said. You know, once you get into the flow of th these things, you start like, literally like a sponge, you know, in every area of your life, like Eckhart Tolle, like hammered through everything that he has, like, um, like Tyler, ours, like every video, like multiple times, take action, like go out seven days a week if necessary for, for like 180 days in a row, like all to the extreme to just find the balance point. And once you find the balance point and you have all the knowledge, that's where it's at, right? But you gotta, gotta work from the, from the ground up, from the ground up, man, okay. What was it? I, I had uh, another question. What are your final images of yourself? What are your self portrait at the end of the game? Well, for me personally, I don't, I don't uh, think that, uh, I don't think as sort of like in that perception that there's some kind of end game for me. And it, it's just a journey of struggle and, and beating yourself. It's sort of like conquering your procrastination and, and, your, and your self that wants to take the path of least resistance almost daily everybody has the same fears and everybody has the same doubts right now what what the biggest i think the biggest misconception that people have is that as you become successful the life gets easier that's one of the biggest misconceptions that that you can possibly have what's going to happen if you get a promotion at work more responsibility, more responsibility right you make more money what's going to happen well you're going to get more work to do because you're so awesome like when you build a company, well, a lean company is some responsibility, but a company of 50 people is not is more, right? It's not easy. And the, the better you get, it's similar with training. The better you get in the gym, the, the harder it gets to progress. So more and more responsibility, but as that caterpillar, you get more and more equipped to handle the extra stress and you cannot carry the weight of the world and carry the weight of having 100 people on your payroll and still make it happen. You know, that's really, really difficult. But at the point when you reach that point in the journey, you can handle it. If someone gave me right now, like an eight-figure business, I couldn't manage it, dude. Like it would just bankrupt. But I can progressively build up to something like that where I can change the world because I'm exposing myself to enough to do that. So I don't know the end game, right? But it's going to be the best I can do, right? That, that, that's the thing I can promise you, right? Yeah. I think this question assumes that 
most people that are doing something have found their passion and they know exactly where they want to be at the end of their life or their life and i don't think that's it at all i think that if you look at the most successful people in history the thing that they ended up being known for was not the thing they started with i i think this is almost universally true maybe one or two people are outliers but most people especially we who like i said are not necessarily driven by a certain vision since you were kids work our way up to discovering what we like and what our passion is and i think that we start with what we see now i i, I think this is what everybody should do start with what you see right now with me it was for me it was joining a network marketing company it was starting a fitness business next is going to be something else i think you you need, you need to to see life as summits you see the a uh, 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 top of a hill in front of you you go on on that top of the hill and then you you look forward and you see a bigger hill you go on that and then you go on on the other one and i think both mario and i see maybe the next hill in front of us but i think that we cannot say what we're going to be at 50 years old 60 years old and uh i think this question of finding your passion is one of the most asked questions in the world right now because everybody talks about that and i think that even people that are doing something have not discovered their passion i think a very 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 small percentage of, very small percentage of the people are sure about what they want to do for the rest of their life the other ones are trying things out and they are adjusting on the way and i think that is the best approach for most people yeah that, that's a good one and uh, look up a mastery by robert green and some of his interviews where he talks really about like in your 20s you can experiment a lot of different things and you probably heard this idea maybe from uh, a bunch of other success kind of speakers or someone so in your 20s you can try out a lot of different things you can fail the risk of failure in the 21st century if you're a guy or a girl in your 20s eh, you know you're not gonna die of hunger land is not gonna eat you there's nothing really to be afraid of. But as you move into your 30s and your 40s, you, you will get an idea at that point what you want to do. And that also kind of goes hand in hand with how your brain develops over the course of a lifetime, where your plasticity of your brain is the most uh, evident when you're in your 20s, when you're early in life especially. But let's say in your 20s, take that as an example. You're in a capacity where your brain is a little bit all over the place. It's not like as solid and rock solid found that as someone in their 40s where their ideas are already so ingrained that they have something that they're sure of a hundred percent and they're just following that <laughs> and sometimes this can be this can backfire in the wrong way because some guys get stuck to the same principle they can't change their mind who here knows like a guy in their 40s and 50s they just can't change their mind no matter what you tell them like they can read like a hundred like they can read like a hundred books like there's no way like you can tell them whatever you want to like it doesn't matter they will never change Right? Because at that point, it's really hard. It, 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 it's almost natural for that to happen, even for us that really invest a lot of time in, in keeping our brain plastic and through exercise, increasing BDNF and all these other factors that make your brain grow and adapt. But still, you will experience that over time. That's just the way the life works, right? You get more and more kind of specialized in the domain where you're supposed to end up in. And don't be afraid to like, make a ton of failures in your 20s like with random stuff, like he joined an MLM, like network marketing, you know, that's very frowned upon by some people, but you learn a ton. Whoa, well, like you learn lot. like sales, you learn how to deal with people, you learn like all these things that, dude, like you're gonna use that everywhere, everywhere, no matter what your passion is, you need to know sales and marketing. If you don't know those two things, like you're gonna like, there's no way you're gonna succeed in business, like no way, even as a job, it's like really hard without sales and marketing. Like you can, you just have to, you have to learn these things, right? So don't be afraid to fail in your twenties and your thirties. It's kind of like the sweet spot where you have almost like one side of your, is like very rock solid about certain things, but you still have that plasticity where you can kind of combine and mash up and create all these amazing ideas. But in your forties, it's sort of like a time. Okay. Let's self-reflect. Let's, let's make books. Let's create things that are lasting evergreen things that can last for beyond my existence. Right? That's sort of like one model of look at it. This is not the end all be all, but it's sort of like a nice model to look at it because it kind of allays that fear that we have in our 20s. Oh, I'm all fuck up, you know? You can always recover. You can recover. So don't be afraid of that, right? Cool. Uh, how are we on time? We are almost three hours in six minutes in line. So.
Okay, cool, cool. We're gonna take one more question, guys, okay? And uh, the photos and all the other stuff later. Okay, cool. So we don't, we don't wanna get kicked out. Like last three events, I got kicked out of the hotel. It wasn't nice, okay? <laughs> okay, um, yeah. Um, what is the best way to maintain muscle while cutting? A high protein diet and a good progressive training plan. One more. Uh, your experience and plenty of sleep. <laughs> your experience that it's safe to uh, maintain a long term a uh, high protein diet or we should take some precaution? precaution some? Well, look. That's a very, very sensitive topic because there is, yes, there are a lot of there, there's a lot of confusion out there in high protein diets. There's research coming from labs of Jose Antonio and other researchers that are showing that, well, at least in their span of time, which is usually under a year, that it's safe. We don't really know, uh, and, and it's kind of hard to figure that out because there's so many confounding factors. Because over the course of a lifetime, we don't know if, this, if it's the high protein that something caused that something to happen to you or whether it's something else. So we kind of have to rely on short-term data. And so far, the short-term data shows that if you're moderate, it's fine. And I, again, I think it's sort of like a sweet spot kind of situation. As, as nat if you look at any natural law, it's usually like a Goldilocks zone. You know, like planet Earth is just at the right point. If you were just one little bit of further in or further out, there would be no life here, right? There's like this Goldilocks zone where there's like a balance between everything that you're doing. Same as with training, overtraining and undertraining. There's like this balance point with the diet as well. There's this balance point where it's sustainable, where it's perfect, where it's like not too much, not too little. So find the balance point. I wouldn't really stress too much about it for now. You know, maybe in the future something comes out, but at, at, who knows, right? Yeah. Cool. You want to add in stuff? Yeah, I, that's, that, that's <laughs> what I want to say. Cool, cool. But check out his video uh, recently on, um, on, on, on protein, right? You on, made a on, vegetarian on diet and protein yeah, yeah, and meat I, I, and, and that intake is pretty cool. Just one yeah. thing about this topic. I, I study medicine. And my professor from, the, from nephrology, basically, who studies the kidney and so on, mm -hmm. told me that if uh, a, a big amount of proteins passes through the filters of the... Um, kidney, especially one part, which is the basal membrane, mm -hmm. this will cause hypertrophy of the basal membrane and disbalancement of basically <coughs> the entire system and entire cells, which will lead to chronic uh, kidney uh, failure. Well, look, that, that, that's fantastic, right? But I would challenge the doctor to bring evidence to the table when, when claiming a certain thing. No, it's we don't know the amount. Exactly. exactly. That's, that's like bring the evidence to, to the exact data point where that's happening so we have the actual data because we don't know why that would, might happen. Because and like if you if I would tell you right now, okay, that's bad, then what, what amount can I recommend you? You know, like can I tell you, okay, stick to 70, stick to 100, stick to 120. Is it at a point of, you know, we don't really know. But I mean, this is, all, this is actually very easy to test yourself on. Like kidneys are very easy to test. Like can keep your blood work and kidney work and kidney function tested every three months if you want to. Yeah, I haven't seen any concerns in terms of my diets and they've been very high protein in the past when I was like bro mode, you know, like bro yeah. mode, like 250, 300 grams of protein every day. You know, like I was eating like 50 egg whites and Jesus Christ, like the, the, the guy that like I, I was imagining like chicken invaders, if that becomes a reality, they're going to come and kill me. <laughs> It was so bad. I was just eating like chicken breast and eggs every day. You know, I was like slaughtered. So bad, bad karma, right? But I mean, I did my kidney tests and everything. It was totally fine, right? Because I was very concerned with that. So you can test this over time and, and kind of prove it from your own anecdotal evidence because the research is clear. If you have healthy kidneys, at least in the span that they said in six to months to a year, there's nothing wrong with it, right? So we. We, I argue with, I mean, I always look at the data. It's not like my opinion, but it's just the data. And I trust the data, man. That's, <laughs> that's all I can tell you, but right? For example, if you check your kidney function, the indicators that you are using are not suitable for this topic because basically those indicators will show uh, injury that is already um, developed, like after you lose 50% of your uh, nephron mass. So, I understand. I understand, I understand your concern. So the, the 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 it's it's a responsibility of, of sort of the medical research to provide tools and measurements to be able to test this if this is a real concern. 
right? It's similar in many, if I go to a doctor right now and I, I did this test, like I only had a doctor like a year ago, I did like a standard generic, generic kind of the exam, you know, they're like, oh my God, like your heart is not working properly because my heart rate is so low. Because I was just training a lot, oh, right? Yeah. You know, they're like, oh my God, like what's going on here? Are you on medication or something? You know, like so many of these standards and these metrics that we have in the system are outdated. You know, they still recommend avoiding egg yolks if your cholesterol is high. It's like, no, there's no way that, that there's no causal relationship between the two. It's been well tested. This is a skewed data back from epidemiologic research back in the 60s and the 70s. It doesn't make any sense. So it's important for us, I mean, to, to sort of like look at it from a more evidence-based standpoint if you really want to dig deep into it. Because I, I don't think, like, as I said earlier, like, ask your doctor when he's made a mistake so you can really talk to him on that level of data exchange, not like personal opinion or anecdote. Because, right, anecdote is, is not a, a sufficient amount to cause any kind of recommendation or any, any kind of thing that we should obey like personal anecdote is very, very weak on the, on the scale of evidence. You want to look at randomized controlled trials. If there's none, then you look at system, like, well, there has to be some, but let's say randomized controlled trials, then you look at systematic reviews, meta-analyses, you know, you go like deeper and deeper where people take thousands of studies and summarize them and see what the data is, right? And luckily with medicine and all of you guys here, you don't have to so much worry about the medicine side of things because there's so many research subjects there's so many studies. It's so much harder to study bodybuilding and, and hypertrophy and exercise than it is medicine, right? Think about that for a second. Like medical research has tens of thousands of subjects through research studies. They have so much potential and they have so much funding. Compared to the nutrition style things, like nobody cares how to get from jacked to more jacked. You know, like who cares about that? You know, like, because you're already good. You're already good in the eyes of the, of the medicine, of the research, right? So it's a little bit of stuff to think about. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah, guys, uh, we got to wrap it up. This was, this was <laughs> the last question uh, because we went on. It's already past three hours. Uh, Hotel is going to kick us out in 15 minutes. I know this. Um, is it? Okay. It's a bit hard for you. You were ever till now, you know, in your last, in your seven years, in the point of breakdown and you attempt to use illegal substances? No. If you cut your one year of your students. Sorry? If one of your students is using one of Absolutely uh, not. I, I forbid, I don't work, I immediately discount anybody who's not a lifetime natural, any kind of illegal substance. <coughs> Sorry? If you do not cut him using illegal substances. No, I, I can I can say with, with uh, fair deal of certainty that if someone approaches me by looking at them if they're using or not. Because in these courts, uh, lots of people uh, stay, uh, are using the work, uh, progress workouts. I'm a, I'm a runner back for seven years, and uh, my coach uh, had trained me progressing. And in one point, I've got, I, I was unable to pass that point. Mm -hmm. After one year of hard training, hard training per week, I've got over that stage, and uh, some guys were uh, coming I understand. To get, use this, use this, use this. I prefer to... Look, it's a challenge for all natural lifters to, to look at it a long game and look at what, what are the consequences long term. My goal is not to have the biggest bicep or have the biggest chest or be like this next Mr. Olympia. I don't care about that. I just want to become naturally the best I can be and that's my ultimate goal. Uh, any kind of steroid talk from any kind of clients or anybody, I just bam, like out of the picture, like not even on the table. It's a different universe. I don't enter that universe and I don't care about it. If you're taking any drugs, like do like do whatever you want, but you're not going to be a part of my programs, not going to be a part of my social circle or anywhere nearby any of my friends that I that I know of, because it's sort of like you have that responsibility then who because I mean, let's face it, the data is clear that that, that kind of abuse of certain substances like cause long term damage, right? It can cause significant amount of damage to someone's health. I don't want to be a part of that or, or have that anywhere near me. Right, so it's very, very clear with that. So it's important for everybody to make that distinction. I know coaches that don't mind. I'm very, very strict with that. That's one of my absolute, absolute rules. Like you don't even have, like apply to the program. You're not gonna even get an email back, you know, like literally, like done, done.
right? I have a guy stalking you on social media, you know, it's like, he's gonna tell me if you take drugs, you know? <laughs> like, this guy looks too jacked, done. <laughs> cool, cool, uh, cool. All right. Yeah, um, yeah, guys, so, once again, uh, massive, massive thank you for all for being here. I hope uh, some of our rambling was, uh, was good. Thanks to you, man. I hope, uh, hope that you guys got some value out of it. That was our intention. Uh, be sure to check out Radu's stuff as well if you haven't already. I know uh, most of you have, but if you haven't already, be sure to check out his programs, check out his YouTube channel, and all the other stuff so you can stay in touch. And, what's, uh, you, uh, what's your name or social name or something? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, you can write. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, just write it up. So there. So you can follow his stuff. He has a really, really cool program as well for getting shredded, <laughs> which is uh, which is awesome for you guys that want, just want a step by step system. It's it's pretty cool. Very very affordable as well. So it's like yeah, that's the YouTube channel. So yeah. So yeah, check out his free content as well. I mean, it's it's amazing. Uh, cool, cool. So everybody, yeah, as I said, thank you and. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's humble. Like, what are, what are you gonna say? <laughs> We're gonna stay around a little bit here if someone's take a photo for social media or something. Uh, <laughs>